There are great historic moments in baseball, and if we had not done a third show in this series, we would have left them out. And Mr. Drosher, from your own lips, I would love to hear uh, the Bobby Thompson home run story. Well, uh, we were getting beat four to one, and uh, we had three more outs, and I waited till all my club came into the dugout, and I said, uh, you've had some kind of year, boys, and I said, uh, you have nothing to be ashamed of, and when you walk off this field, I want your head right up. I don't want your chin down. Mm -hmm. And all during the nine innings, Don Newcomb, which is an absolute true story, I was coaching at third base, and I'd go by Don Newcomb as he would go into the mound, and I'd call him everything. I called him everything you could think of, Henry, trying to get him mad. You know what I mean? To get into a fight with me, and then we both get thrown out. But I'd get rid of Newcomb. <laughs> we weren't going to beat him. He was throwing aspirin tablets. What does that mean? Oh, yeah, I see. Yeah, he I've was throwing, <laughs> you couldn't see the ball. <laughs> yeah, I so, finally in the, I'd forgotten that Finally, in the, uh, in the ninth inning, we go out, and Dark leads off, and he gets a base hit. Mueller gets a base hit, and uh, then Lockman uh, comes up, and uh, he doubles on the left field line and scores one run. Mueller comes in the third and sprains his ankle. And sort of, you know, like it was broken, and he couldn't, I got to have a pinch runner now. Mm -hmm. So I picked the biggest guy in my club to come and stand over with me, because I knew Newcomb was coming after me. Uh -huh. I knew he was coming right to third base, mm -hmm. so I brought the Clint Hartung, the big Texan, about 6'5". I brought him over there, and Newcomb started for me, and I said, and uh, I didn't say a word, I just looked at him. I didn't want him to come over here. And uh, Hartung said, just keep coming. And Newcomb made a turn and walked down the clubhouse, and they all waved handkerchiefs at him. Now, the hitter that I thought would do the job was Monty Irvin. Mm -hmm. And he popped up to Hodges in foul territory in the coach's box. And then Bobby Thompson and Mays were the next two hitters. And I didn't know whether they pitched to Thompson or not. But on Monday, uh, Thompson hit a home run off of Branca. And he hit it in the upper deck in Ebbets Field to put us in front two to one. And uh, Monty Irvin hit a home run in the ninth inning, and we went at three to one. So I walked up to home plate and I said, Branca remembers that you hit a slider. Didn't you hit a slider off of him? He said, yeah. I said, he won't throw that today. He'll throw you a fastball right there. That's his weakness anyway. Get him a fastball in there. And they got it in there. He took it, strike one. He looked at me, I said, come on. Come on, he'll throw it again. And now he threw another one, but he got it out just a little bit. And he hit it in the lower deck in the polo grounds, which is hard to do. The upper deck is easy, yeah. but the lower deck, the Two. upper deck hangs over. 250. So oh, like, 250. No, no. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he, had, he didn't hit it's it hard, over. Uh, hell. <laughs> he didn't hit it over 270 yeah. feet, Mickey, but he got it into the lower deck. That means it was going low and straight. Line, you know, line, line drive. If it had been oh. in any other ballpark in the country, the left fielder probably would have had to come in four or five steps to and catch, catch it, right? A line there. drive home run. Line, and we won the <laughs> National League pennant. That, that was the, that was the uh, home run heard around the world, wasn't it? I that mean, was the shot heard around the world, yeah. as everyone says. <laughs>